Welcome back to the Quaint Pro League. This is the B stream, and we do have Razy versus Saigib. We just had a little look at the Nosfer versus CNZ game. It's already been upset central, and uh, yeah, it was uh, definitely a massive surprise. I thought Nosfer wouldn't win it comfortably, would but definitely have the edge in that matchup. But everything CNZ just you know what he did just worked incredibly he had a lot of patience for nosfo and you know in terms of his gun skill and everything he did in between in terms of his mechanics and his adaptation was just nothing short of spectacular but as all said and done we're now going to watch Razy versus Saigib and in terms of map choices we're going to start off with Crop to Keep, Bale and then if it goes to the third and final map it will be on Deep and Brave so a lot of small maps coming up here Flea so a lot of yeah. chaos to be had yeah, indeed. And now if we look at the champions, we're kicking it off with Strzok versus BJ on the Corrupted Keep. Then on Veil of Nath, we are getting Ranger versus Death Knight. And then finally, and this is the one that I am excited for if it gets to that point, on the Tiebreaker map, Deep Embrace, we are getting Anarchy versus Athena. Two extremely fast and agile lights duking it out on one of the smallest and fastest maps in the entire game. So that should be a treat. We don't really see Anarchy played a lot on uh, Deep Embrace. We've seen Athena come through over the last few weeks. And uh, yeah, I completely agree. Normally see a kill or, you know, uh, a saw lag or a scale or, you know, more of a heavier side in terms of champions, sometimes even a strog. But yeah, Anarchy, Anarchy versus Athena is not something you see every day. Oh. So I'm very excited if it does go to a map three. But this is Razy, of course. It's going to be very tough to even take him to a map three, let, let alone win this series. But Saikib has been looking very impressive over the last month to six weeks and definitely has the potential to do it you know we could make this stream the upset central upset city but yeah it's uh gonna be very tough to call so we'll be starting with corrupted keep like you rightly said and with the picks being the strog versus the bj very standard champions as well nothing really off meta in the slightest and we'll have to see if razy can do what he does best it was one of his go-to maps not anymore it's more in the, in the middle ground for him really considering back over the last year or so and we'll have to see what Saiga can do just in terms of circumstances. But I think with the server choice as well, um, not really too sure 100%. I think it's NA East, I believe. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're going to keep this off right away, Flea, here. We're going to start with keep between Razy and Saiga in this winner's bracket match. And let's find out who's going to come out on top. They said that they would do NA East for all three of the maps if it goes that far. Now, immediately off the bat, it's actually uh, Razy who starts off extremely aggressively. Lots of damage being dealt, and he forces Saigif on the back foot already. Razy already going for a fantastic flank. Got a fair amount of damage done with the Pika, and even though he didn't connect entirely, still got a few tickles of shots here and there but Razy look at the stack he has and he's in a great position to contest this heavy too but was looking to see if he can go for a cheeky little flank around his hourglasses in towards the red room but doesn't find him as you see Saiga decided to prioritize the high ground as Razy's taken a fair amount of rocket damage in that last situation but it's looking like he's just trying to sand his ground but I don't think it's the best time for Razy to drop down but cleans him up with the shotgun after a great rocket shot afterwards and is using the heavy machine gun to the best of his ability to do as much damage as possible before he picks up that heavy. That amount of damage that the dual LG was tremendous though. Won't amount to him anything unfortunately as Razy cleans him up for a 2-0. This is absolutely not going the right way for Saigip. Now Razy's in position for the Mega as well. Oh, beautiful tribal. 72 damage out of nowhere just before the item spawns. Lethal. Saigib needs to put an end to this, and indeed he will. But can he turn it around? He's one of the strongest players in the world, and Razy. Just so confident right there. Keeping his distance, using the base machine gun and just completely demolishing Saigib, knowing that he can dodge the rockets likely at that distance. Very confident. Yeah, it was 
a little bit of a meme. I'm sure you already know of it, Flea, when uh, <laughs> Easy beat Horon. Oh, was it 47 to 3 up to 5? I can't remember from the top of my head, but um, yeah, we saw some huge signs of potential from Razy. Not just in general, we know how good he is anyway, but just in terms of keeping him on the spawn with that clutch. But even with the Strog, he's doing equally as well. We're not going to see 47 frags, but we're going to see a lot of spawn trap potential here. Already 7 1 in favor of Razy. Hasn't really taken too much damage after each of these fights, so that means that he can continue with the aggression and now he's going to be able to pick up that mega freely and then contest the heavy straight after once he picks up this next light which isn't there but i don't think he's going to be uh too annoyed about that oh, i love that that was just so slick lethal he could have gone straight for his corner but then he realized that side he could jump through the teleporter and easily dodged it so instead he just looped it back around and hit him in the back sick plays from Razy. that's exactly the kind of creativity and that on the spot that we know him for great time for Razy to come in with the lg and this is what I love as well. A lot of players, don't get me wrong, but do play that range game with the heavy machine gun on this map. And, you know, we've heard it from plenty of players saying that the heavy machine gun is so useful. One of the most effective weapons and maybe underused weapons as well on this map. But as soon as Razor gets it and gets the opportunity, he will make full use and get as much value as possible. But as you can see, that last engagement, he picks up the mega, trying to get away, picks up the lights as well, and he's heading straight towards that heavy. It's not for another few seconds. So Razor realizes that and he was trying to think to himself whether he should drop for it or not. But look this Sogget's actually prioritizing the kill. Doesn't work out in his favor because this base he's actually picked up the heavy and then gets the initial kill. A lot of mind games in that five second moment there. And again, Brazy having to deal with a lot of pressure with the LG from Sogget. Could die red left on 23 HP. Still able to do so much work and literally Brazy got away with, with murder on two occasions in the last 20 seconds. My word. No clue how many managers to get away with that one, but that is crazy for you. Cyber now has to play catch up. He still has a lot of time to work with, but he's just out for movement, right? He doesn't have the same level of mobility, and those rockets to the face aren't going to help him mount any sort of comeback either. He does get a frag and the mega for his troubles, but Crazy actually has the better stack. The only thing that the Maestro player is still lacking is just the weapons. And that is why Crazy is going to give up this heavy, won't apply pressure, instead going around for the mega and the rockets, and now he's ready to take another fight. Certainly is indeed. Again, good use of that heavy machine gun. Keeping his opponent at bay. Nice tickle with the rocket as well, just to show that map presence. Sargib now still on the warpath to attempt to track Razy, tracks him down, takes him down in the red room and again picking up that next heavy. So this is looking very good for Sargib. Five frags down on Corrupted Keep, not impossible at all. Still has plenty of time as long as he keeps these frags without taking too much damage in each and every engagement. But against someone like Razy, it's very tough. So to see what he can do here, just pick up the next LG as he was sort of ammo management and wasn't really looking too good. But he's in the perfect place right now. And as he catches him whilst he's using that peak, he left on 83 HP. That's going to be fine. As now the heavies come up in the next couple of seconds. But look at his raise. He's going to see if he can get before he will wish he will not. And what great rocket there from Sidekick. But would he get cleaned up by Razy? No, he does not. And that last rocket didn't hit either. So we have to see who can pick up this next mega. Sidekick just biding his time to see if he does come up. And Razy... Catches him only slightly with his trousers down because Saiki wasn't disciplined enough to hold that angle just an extra second longer and raises the one with the advantage once again. There was a burst of life, Saiki narrowing the gap. This is still not insurmountable, but Razy's just looking so good. Look how far Razy is chasing him. How often do you see that lethal? Razy knew that Heavy was up and he set him all the way beyond Mega just to mess with Saigip and try and deal some more damage. That is absolutely sick. Certainly is sick to my stomach is amazing now continuing. 
this destruction. Heavy, 10 seconds now. Razy already got the height advantage. It's a matter of if Psycho's going to risk going for the telly or not. Went in through the perfect time. And the problem is he has to give up that item, which is perfectly understandable. He did this best to contest it. It's only he did not, but that the speed Razor came in then. Psychic couldn't really do too much about it as it was not what he anticipated. But now he's stuck around that LG area. I'm just checking to see what psychic has got. He hasn't got a heavy machine gun, so he's going to be caught in the corner. But look at this. Great LG from Psychic, but sadly for Razor, he didn't have the right weapon out at the time. It's a little bit impatient, but it doesn't matter. Razy comes out with the trade. Making it a little bit anticlimactic for us. Six frags ahead, picks up the heavy. Goodness, the energy again, and look at the work he's doing. So I keep, don't get me wrong, wins Jesus. that battle, but it's already done way too much. Can, and oh, the trade comes out. It just Even if Saigon takes him down, it just can't get a clean frag out of him. Lethal, that was a 200 damage burst of damage with the basic machine gun. How nasty. Is this level of damage out there? Crazy is now over 1000 points of damage ahead of his opponent, Saigip. And we all know that Saigip is an absolute brawler, an extremely gifted player mechanically, capable of using every single weapon in the game to its fullest extent, and Razy yet still doing better than him. That is GG for sure. It certainly is indeed. A minute left. So I give just try and so regain his thoughts. Getting many for this second map is it's already mathematically impossible. But so I give, I will say, did put up a very good fight considering what you had to deal with at the uh, start of the, uh, uh, start of the map. Like considering things spiraled out of control ever so slightly for him, with Razor having full map control, all the items with that seven or eight one leads to begin with. So. Cool episode slightly, but just not going to be enough. And just to let everyone know at home that whilst we're waiting for this first map to finish up in the meantime, the second map will be on Veil vale, and it will be the Death Knight versus the Rangers. So that will be the next map coming up next. Amazing there, just uh, having a bit of a giggle there with the Pika, just waiting to see if he comes back out from the red room, which he will not, and Saigib has just gone directly underneath to bottom mid, it's going to be contesting that heavy, race is just going to get away, doesn't need to do too much at this point, and he's going to be pretty pleased by that, it wasn't by, he didn't win by 44 frags here, Flea, but he's going to be happy with the 5 frag lead anyway, and you can see from the damage as well, just under 800 damage, but the item control was very even in terms of yeah. contestion, and even the LG was very even as well. It's just a shame that Psygib didn't really get um, enough value from the items he picked up in comparison. But yeah, like I said before, second map will be on Veil and it will be the uh, Death Knight versus Deranger. I mean, Psygib, like you said, definitely put in a valiant effort, but this is Razy that we're talking about, right? I don't think anyone in the entire Quake Pro League has played in as many grand finals without actually managing to secure the win. As anyone, right? So Razy is an absolute top competitor. And Saigib, he's been looking a little bit better over the past few weeks, but he hasn't been all that consistent during this stage so far. And so I think that this is the result that a lot of people were expecting as well. But still, Saigib not looking half bad. Map 2, completely different scenario. Might be more to his uh, his favor. So let's see how this turns out. I don't think it looks too bad at all. Um, yeah. Not even just talking about score difference. Even if the score difference was a lot bigger in terms of deficit, I still think he played that really well. Where They both had the right idea on the numerous occasions, you know, with the uh, range game and heavy machine gun, uh, how they were going to contest the mega end, you know, trying to pick each other up on spawn as cleanly as possible. It was uh, The mindset from both players was still there. And as you got to remember, it's also the first series of the day. And Razy doesn't want to go straight into the loser bracket and have to do a huge run, which Nosfa has to do now, just mind you, in that first round of the loser bracket later on. So obviously we did have CNZ versus Nosfa early on. CNZ did take that two to zero. Not something any of us really expected here. And to have this match as an upset, it's even more of a tall order <laughs> here. But yeah, I think, yeah, you're right. We did predict this to be probably a razy 2-0. I didn't even ask for your prediction, but you know what? I'm a, a reader of minds here, Fleece. I don't think it was... Uh, 
too necessary. But we'll see what Psycho can do. I think, like you said before, he's put on a good performance considering what he's up against. And like you said, every server is going to be on NA Easter pings are almost equal between the two. So not really too much of a deficit there in terms of uh, disadvantages with the ping. But yeah, Vale, uh, sorry, I was going to say Strog then. Um, Death Knight versus Ranger, what's your thoughts on this? Death Knight versus Ranger. I mean, one has got the massive burst damage, the other's got the mobility, right? We saw this earlier. The Hang played Ranger so well on this map with his orb. It is a true force of nature if you can make the most out of that ability, right? You can so easily avoid having to go through those teleporters to get to the top level of the map. There's no bounce pass that you have to take. You can just close the gap just like that and completely take your opponent by surprise. Even if they're standing right next to, say, the Mega, you can just orb straight on it and steal it away. The Hang did that in his matches earlier against Cooler. So if Razy can make the most out of that orb, he's got a tremendously powerful tool to both do damage as well as maneuver around the map. Now, on the other hand, Saigip is a brawler. He is going all in on the damage. We saw that first with the BG on map one, and now on map two, he is going to re be running the Death Knight, who's gotten a buff in the most recent patch, and now is a tremendously powerful flame strike that is extremely effective as both area of the dial, as well as just a massive shot of damage to your opponent's face. So, Honestly, it comes down to how the orb is going to be used. I think Death Knight is a very solid pick here, but Saigib has to be careful that Razy doesn't start running circles around him and catching him by surprise with that orb. Yeah, Death Knight's been used on a lot of maps, really. I think it's nice yeah. to see not only that he's a viable champion now after the um, buff uh, a few months back, but I think it's just great that he can be, he's like an all-round champion now. He can be used on most maps, really, considering, well... It depends on how you use him. It depends on your style and how you, you know, go for these items and how you principally try and uh, lay traps for your opponent. He's useful on um, most maps, really, which is uh, quite nice. It's pretty similar to, like, how you see, like, a, the Ranger or the Doom, for example. So it's nice to see he's been used quite often. But in this matchup, you know, we're not going to see any scales or kills or anything like that. It's going to be a little bit more different in comparison. Razy is currently up 1-0 to zero for just joining us in this series on the B-Stream. And we are going to be kicking things off here to see if Sargib can claw his way back. We are going to be starting with race POV, already doing a, a sprinkle of damage onto Saigib as he went across into that rail room. And Razy now just delaying the Mega a fair amount. And already heavy segregation between both these items. It just depends on who's going to win out in this first bout. Because it will be absolutely huge whoever comes out on top. Pretty slow and calculated start for the time being. Neither player really committing to a fight just yet. There comes that orb, allowing Razy to freely secure both of the major items. That's exactly what we're talking about, Lethal. That mobility. Just out of absolutely nowhere, you can turn a bad position into an extremely favorable one. And now Saigip is eating a lot of rails. He's looking for the small resources in the hopes of getting stacked right back up. But at four points of health, I don't know if Razy is going to give him much to work with. That's a good read by Saigon, though. Not immediately going down the stairs to pick up the health bubbles, but just realizing that Razy will be watching him there. Unfortunately for him, it doesn't really amount to much. And Razy is off to an extremely good start. The problem is for a lot of their opponents is the fact that Razy expects these surprise attacks or surprises in general. But Razy's the kind of person where if his parents create like a surprise party for him, he would know it's coming. Like, you know, this is how good this guy is in terms of like prediction and what he expects his uh, players to come out with. But so far, so good for Razy. 3 0 up. It's only not even been two minutes yet. And things haven't got completely out of control. But this is what I mean. Because of the early item segregation here, it meant that Razy can now take advantage of using it all to get to both of these items. He's already done a huge amount of work onto Psygib. And now up 4 to 0, picks up the Mega, and now it's going to be stopping him in his tracks on the Rocket Spawn. And the trade comes out from both players. It's like you're currently on minus 1. Heavy's going to be coming up very shortly, and raises all over it like anything. Saigip, indeed, that negative 1, no one wants to start. With less than 0 points to his name. And Razy making good use out of that passive ability, of course. Less self-damage when you go for the rocket jumps. 
Saigip really can't catch a break. Crazy has been constantly out positioning him, not just with the orb, but then also by making clever use of those rocket jumps. Knowing that he can easily tank them for days, and now he's gonna close the gap. Out comes the orb once more, but this is dangerous for Razy. Yeah, the flame strike gets popped. Saigip was not as low as Razy would have liked him to be. But ultimately, it doesn't really amount to anything because Razy is so fast on the refrag and now is in a perfect situation to take away a small armor as well as a mega and just continue where he left off. He's got the same rotation working in his favor and Saigip desperately trying to do a bit of rail damage because he doesn't really have anything more to work with. He can't take the mid-level fight with the LG. So he's got to hope that Razy comes within range of his rockets or that he can fend them off with the rail. And neither of those worked out for him. It's like the shot he got on Psychic earlier on where he went in straight for the trade. He wouldn't have gone for that trade if he didn't know the exact time of that mega. He literally only had about a second, half two seconds to spare and managed to clean him up. But Psychic though, looking a lot better compared to what we saw in this first first few opening minutes good stuff from Saigib again look and see if he's going to push in straight for the rockets which he does and I think Razy was just looking to go for the trade he does not a little bit of BM coming out here which is uh you know I like that flea I don't mind it too much it's already yeah. Mega's come up in the next couple of seconds if he's come up the next 10 next 10 seconds <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you that's not something you know <laughs> see every day <laughs> oh dearie me we've seen a fair few suicides in our time flea but we've seen quite a lot so far in this map even the suicide trade we saw in the rocket room earlier on is not something which kind of confused me ever so slightly but it's not something you saw with that suicide in the toxic mix of that well but it's just one of those things sadly Razy comes out there now up seven to two got a great stack to work with again to now contest this heavy Crazy does give it up, allowing Saigip to walk away, but it doesn't even matter. Razy is just like, oh, you want the heavy? Okay, you can take it. Here's one direct rocket to the face, oh, here's another one, and then I hit you with a rail. So uh, how do you like that heavy now? Are you happy that you got a hold of it? Crazy is just not letting off an inch. Look at oh. these rockets, lethal! And now he's just gonna push in for the kill once more. Saigip does land a bit of flame damage, but that's nowhere near enough. Certainly hidden. And it's crazy now, just trying to. Yeah, not gonna happen. Tribal comes out. The Saigib. Four and a half minutes left remaining. Basically, just coming up to say hello, but Saigib was more than prepared for him to come out on top. Good tribal from Saigib again. So, so weak. Expects him to go straight for those rockets. And the believe that's a gun top is on his head, bouncing, but. Nothing's gonna happen, especially with the stack he had going into that. So he picks up the heavy, gets railed in the meantime. Amazing now, just on low ground, just waiting to see where Saigib is gonna be going. And at the same time, he's just trying to recuperate. Doesn't pick up the light, but Saigib's just sitting there daring for him to come out, which he does. He's actually goes straight past him, gets through the teddy first to try and get that first rocket off. This is the first rail. He is railable, exactly 90, but it seems like. Means he needs to get out of there, realizes that he can't contest that mega anymore, even if he tried. Sidekick's now going to be going straight towards the heavy, so we've got a nice little rotation going on here. There's Razy, we know what he's like. He's not the kind of player who would play for time, he's just going to keep circling the round Sidekick to try and recover at the same time. It's still available, needs to take an extra level of caution, not anymore after picking up that light. But this is good though from Razy, even though he has to give up a lot of his items, he's still putting the pressure on. Even if he's not picking up the items and wasting time at the same time. And with six frags to make up in just three minutes of playtime, all the pressure is on Psykip right now. And in contrast to the previous map, the damage is actually pretty much identical. Razy only having 200 points of damage over his opponent, but he does have a pretty serious advantage when it comes to the item pickups. So Saigib definitely not slowing down in terms of how much he's hitting, but Razy has just been out positioning him for so much of this map, I feel like, and has made much better use of his ability. There have been a few times where Saigib really allowed 
that flame strike to put in the work to damage over time uh, get himself a favorable fight i think when Razy overextended at one point but even when he does get a frag it happens at such a time and in such a situation that Razy just rushes off the spawn gets a refrag and just instantly gets back into that cycle of all the boots right and so psychic really is left without any opportunity to get comfortable and now by the time I finish saying that, we're already one minute further down into the map, Lethal, and Saigib is nowhere near making it up. Yeah, Razy's just playing silly buggers with Saigib at the moment, and I must say, Razy's made some fantastic reads here. Just to time waste as much as possible, and he's definitely doing himself justice, and Razy... He knew full well not to drop down straight to the rocket spawn, but wow, the rails there from Saigib. Definitely gonna build up some momentum for him. Has four frags now to try and bag if he can in the next 90 seconds. He definitely can do it, but the only problem is he needs to try and stop Razor. Pick up these weapons in his arsenal. Comes out with the rockets, but the LG is way too strong there from Razor. Very tough now to try and recover from this, even if he can. And Razor, yeah, it's just going to stand his ground, do some damage if he can, but he's not going to overextend for some of these items because he doesn't really need to, really, in this moment. At this point, I do believe it is over and done with. Yeah. Mathematically, Saigib still has a chance if he can just string them all together, but Razor even steals away a Mega. And he's just so good at holding down these positions that, in reality, Saigib has nothing left that he can do. He's just pushing desperately right now, running into the wall that is Razy's defensive play. I mean, let's not forget Razy is not only extremely gifted when it comes to the damage output and his combat skills, but he can play so defensively that it rivals the likes of base. He can slow the game down to a crawl, and that's what he's been doing for the past minute or two. And add on to that the orb, the extra mobility, and there's just nothing inside with bit of <laughs> Wow, yeah, <laughs> you really can't not at all. Just like we said, good game sense, great reads. Razy's even coming out with his uh, signature gauntlet, but it's like, it's just, yeah. Yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah. He's, in, he's telling him, no, yeah, you, you can, you're going to beat me, it's fine, but we're not going to give you a gauntlet frag. That's just taking the mickey, mate. That's, <laughs> you can do today. it to everyone else in the EU side, but <laughs> not to me, which is... Uh, yeah, a little bit of a shame, but yeah, never mind. But there you have it. Razy does come out on top 2-0 to zero against Saigib. I think most of us here and you guys in the chat probably uh, predicted that it was going to be a tall order. But he did keep the scores respectable, especially in that first game, considering how he was playing. So I look forward to seeing how Saigib does later on. He will be in the loser's bracket. Razy will continue on in the witness bracket. And the next match on the B stream, it's not been confirmed yet, guys. So... It probably will take a little bit of time as Kuda will be playing against someone here in the first round of the loser's bracket. So a little bit of time to waste for now. So get yourselves a cup of tea, a brew or some snacks until that next match come. Or maybe go on to the A stream or just keep both open. You know, it's entirely up to you guys at home. But for now, that's us done here on the B stream and we'll see you guys in just a few moments.